The mug is ironic. I don't play golf. Hello, everyone. If you're wondering why my face probably looks puffy, it is because I just watched the Steven Universe special, Change My Mind. Change Your Mind? Change... Change Your Mind? If it looks like I cried, that's because I did. A lot. So basically, I'm going to subject myself to this again because there was a lot that I saw that I want to pick apart and analyze. Just as a disclaimer, this is not really what I want my channel to be in general. Um, I want to focus more on environmentally minded stuff, but I'm justifying it by saying that Steven Universe has a lot of queer themes in it and that queer cinema a lot of times will overlap with eco cinema. Also, I just like it and I want to talk about it, so I'm going to. As we say here on the YouTubes, let's just jump right into it. Change your mind. Here we go. Blue, Connie and I fuse all the time. It's totally normal and fun. <sighs> Connie and I fuse all the time. It's totally normal and fun. Um, Blue, at least in these past few episodes, has been one of the main clear forces of anti-queer sentiment specifically. This line and Blue's reaction and sort of her, the, the mini arc that she goes through in this whole episode, to me, has to do with parents and queer acceptance. Queer themes. Your time on Earth has warped your sense of right and wrong. Yeah, maybe it has. Maybe Pink thought you guys were right to lock her in here when she messed stuff up. But I know what it's like to have a loving family. And we don't do stuff like this to each other. The Crystal Gems understand that I'm Steven. And they support me and Connie. And you guys poofed them for sticking up for me. Found family. Also a very queer thing. Pink slash Rose finding the Crystal Gems is a uh, parallel of found family. Which is something that is common in a lot of people's queer own queer narratives is if they have a family that doesn't accept them, they will find other queer people in the community and that becomes more of their support of the immediate family than their biological family. What are you doing, Blue? Take Pink back to the tower. She prefers to be called Steven. She prefers to be called Steven, and this is the end of uh, Blue Diamond queer acceptance arc slash trans acceptance arc. Fusion, since the series began, has always been sort of a representation of queer relationships and how they are considered by some homeworld to be taboo. But in more recent episodes, there's also been some overlap there with the trans experience in... One of the previous episodes, Blue says something to Garnet where she's like, oh, is, is is it calling itself Garnet now? Which like, it and Garnet and like, that's, that's a, that's how people talk about trans people. So in this way, fusion and sort of just being a crystal gem in general can be representative of all different kinds of the queer experience. Was shattered when she abandoned us. I alone was there for you, and you would use your power against me. Okay, so all three of the other diamonds represent different types of like manipulation in a family context. Blue as the I'm sad, I need attention sort of manipulation. White as a very clear, very like string pulley sort of manipulation. And yellow here is doing that sort of like trade-off kind of manipulation. You know how you can hear some families say like, oh, I fed you and I clothed you and whatever. And you owe, that means you owe me all of this in exchange. And it's like, you're supposed to do that if you're parents, but. Go to your rooms. Uh, which rooms should we go to? Blue, don't make her any angrier than she already is. We're busted. That's another example of the sort of all-powerful, very clear sort of manipulation that I was talking about before with White Diamond, where they have this fear of making her upset because she just 
is in control of everything. They know she's in control of everything. That is just how it is in this family. This way of living. It must have been like torture for you. It's torture to live in a house that wants to make you straight or cis or not queer when you are queer and they are pushing their values on you. Mm, yes. Queer things. Being the odd one out black sheep in a family is not an exclusively queer experience, but seeing as this is coming from a queer creator, I think it's meant to be queer subtext, probably. What? Guys? I feel like there's a significance to like this pose, um, but I can't, I don't know what it is. And <laughs> Steven, you beautiful genius. You pulled Amethyst out of her gem through fusion? This is probably really obvious, but we know fusion represent relationships. So if you're pulling somebody out of their funk, if you're pulling somebody out of their gem by fusion, this is basically a very elegant, very obvious way of saying if somebody's in a funky place reaching out to them can help them get out of it it's good though wow nice form pearl oh thank you i'm particularly excited about the jacket eight very 80s look uh which we know that 80s was a very turbulent time in pearl's life so this 80s jacket could be a reconciliation with that time also, remember she started wearing a jacket in Last One Out of Beach City, um, which is where, you know, she really starts coming out of her shell and, and it's probably a reference to that as well. But also just in general, Pearl's outfits, if you look, and I'm not the first person to point this out, I don't think, I'm pretty sure I read like a Tumblr post or something with this in it, but Pearl's outfits and every single regeneration she's had, they get more and more masculine for the most part. Her very first outfit when she was first given to Pink Diamond was this like very girly, very like, skirt. And then over time, the skirt kind of goes away. Now she's in a business jacket and pants. Um, for Pearl at least, this, I don't want to say shedding of femininity, but this, acceptance of a more androgynous look is her becoming more comfortable with herself and finally shedding the role that homeworld established for her as a servant oh there's also like more feminine could be more subservient symbolism there Huh. The general societal thing that we've been trying to get away from in terms of gender roles is that women are more subservient. So Pearl choosing to over time dress more masculinely could be representative of her slowly accepting that she is not a servant anymore. Because, you know, gender roles exist and mess with people Woohoo! again and this is this is more of a meta commentary um obviously gym culture is this weird f female presenting but no concept of gender society so the commentary i'm listed here is more something that isn't so much in universe as it is connected to the outside world at large and that's honestly a lot of my style of analysis anyway it's less about how does the society in the mechanics of this world work which I can also do but I like connecting it more to real world issues and things in general so if you ever have to deal with a bully be sure to tell an adult <laughs> let's break the fourth wall don't try this at home. <laughs> Which, like, that's interesting that breaking the fourth wall is coming from it here, too, because the, the other place we've mainly seen that was Sardonyx, 
And I don't know, for some reason I assumed that the fourth wall breaking was coming from Pearl, but I guess it's coming from Garnet, which that makes sense. Future vision stuff. She, if she can see different possibilities, she'd also be able to see different realities. If she different realities, and she can see us. Look at me saying that I don't connect it to in-universe lore. I can. I just did it. <laughs> White Diamond, my name is Steven Universe. I'm here to... Steven entering with my name is Steven Universe is effectively a coming out moment. It's saying, hey, I'm not... I'm not Pink Diamond. I'm not what we thought that I was. I am in fact Steven. I am something else. Poor things. Poor Yellow. Her impurities absorb all the blue in her light. She's so strong, but so weak when it comes to blue. Ah, and blue. Her impurities soak up all of the warmth in her spectrum. She thinks she needs you, Pink. As for me, I'm certain I don't need you. After all, I'm every color of the light. But you're a part of me, the part I always have to repress. What? We heard about it, um, maybe season two or three a little bit, and when they're explaining how gems reform after they get, um, poofed, that their bodies are, like, hardened forms of light. White Diamond here is pretty much straight up bringing in color theory into these light wavelengths. We saw earlier that Yellow Diamond is like not great at handling sadness, which, you know, that's because she's yellow and she she represses blue, which blue is a sad color. And then blue is blue because blue is sad. And then white, as White Diamond mentions, white light contains all the colors in the spectrum. So she, ooh, Christianity. Do you wanna talk about this? So there could be a connection here to Christianity in that Jesus and God or God is said to be the encapsulation of everything. So when, for example, Jesus was having his human experience, he like had to have all of the human emotions, like that was a thing. I'm, by the way, I'm coming at this from a Catholic school angle. I, so forgive me if this isn't necessarily true of all Christian religions. So it's interesting to me that, and this is, could may, was maybe not intentional, but White Diamond as this powerful semi-divine figure saying that she is perfect because she's able to encapsulate all of the colors, which as we just established, color means emotion, sort of reinforces that divinity. But also, we know she is a deeply flawed character, which, if, if, if this is an intentional reference to, like, Christianity and religion, ooh boy. <laughs> okay, she was just doing this. That was the Jesus on the cross. That was the Jesus on the cross. That had to be, that has to be intentional, right? Rebecca Sugar! The pose I was doing before. <laughs> this is also a pose that Jesus does and like saints do in a lot of classical and um, renaissance religious paintings. I thought I had everything I wanted to talk about. I wasn't expecting to figure stuff out as I was filming. You're wrong. That's a halo. That's a halo. <laughs> How did I miss all of this religious imagery on my first watch. It's how. <laughs> my friends don't need to be fixed. They're fine the way they are. Oh my god, it's not even God. It's supposed to be the church because her friends are his friends are fine. They don't need to be fixed because they're queer. It just tell she's it is literally Rebecca Sugar telling the church that gay people are fine. That's what this is. That's what this entire scene is. It's not just it's not just a homophobic family. It is the church. Holy this, this is This is Rebecca Sugar taking a stab at homophobic Christians. That's what this, that's what this is. I like homophobic churches. Like it's not just the family dynamic, it's that too. 
became rose quartz to deceive your pathetic friends and now you've improved on that because you're even deceiving yourself anti-trans talking that's all that is it's very clear you know you're in there you've known it all along stop cowering inside your gem you can hide from yourself but you can't hide from me pink don't listen to her, Steven! She's just trying to mess with you! This... Because now I've made the connection between, like, church stuff. This conversation could be, you know, conversion therapy analogy also. Okay, just want, just, I wanted to mention, like, I know a lot of people have were already saying and probably will be saying how creeped out they are by the black and white the draining colors and the controlling and the blank stares which that doesn't bother me as much like i feel like i've seen that but this scene literally made me gag like i had to look away from the screen like i was so uncomfortable something something about the like being invaded just draws on affect which I'm gonna define here what I mean because I don't want to define it right now because it's 1.30 in the morning and I'm tired and it's a very complicated term, but that did it for me. No, wait, wait, where's my... <sighs> I was out of focus, oops. Um, when I realized what was happening in this scene, with the split screen. This is this is when I started crying at my original watch. Um, something about it, it was very personal for me. I still can't quite figure out what exactly it was, but I think it just has something to do with like seeing and acknowledging your true self and like just the split screen really got that across in a really elegant way. And I liked it a lot. And that's when I started bawling like a little baby. <laughs> I only want you to be yourself. If you can't do that, I'll do it for you. That's conversion therapy, lads. <laughs> As my friend Megan so eloquently said, they blew the entire animation budget on this scene, which is really reminiscent of the first fusion we saw between Ruby and Sapphire, which was that, the Stronger Than You episode, the name I can't remember right now, with the spinning and the, the reuniting and the relief that comes with it. And it was an expression of love in that context. In this context, it's also an expression of love, but it's an expression of self-love. And the Kruniverse thought that self-love was so important that you can tell it's it's special it looks it looks better you get that feeling even if, even if you can't tell and like that is what this entire show has been about steven as a character embodies self-love and self-acceptance and that is what that scene proves i guess is it's beautiful it's really beautiful are it's you? interesting now white diamond oh, has dropped anyone? the you know if you just religious let everyone be whoever they are the, re the religious pose um i'm gonna take this opportunity to say that i know some people are gonna be like mm, steven made friends with a fascist and that's bad it's, we shouldn't do that um which okay like you're not wrong but also, this entire situation is meant more, I think, to symbolize what it's like being a literal child in a abusive family situation. And how when you're a child, everything is big. Everything is the worst thing that's ever happened to you. So if you're growing up in this situation, it's going to be what you think the universe is like and by making it this big 
empire instead of just, you know, a nuclear family, you raise the stakes to make it feel like what these stakes feel like when you're a kid. This, that's just my two cents. Like, I don't think it's actually meant to be a one-to-one. -one. Let's make friends with fascists <laughs> because they suck. What's that heart thing? That was quite the doozy. <laughs> Thank you so much for sitting through this. I'm imagining it's gonna be sort of long for a video for me. I also have a lot of editing to do. <laughs> if you like this video, I did one about Pokemon and how it deals with the nature culture binary. Also, I plan on making more of these because this is very fun. Not necessarily see the universe, but just YouTube videos in general. So make sure you subscribe. Uh, my name is Savannah. I use they them programs. Thank you for watching. Love you so much. Goodbye.